Looking back now to uh, your playing days here in Denver, uh, how would you describe the type of player you were? I like I like to think that I I put everything I had into in, into not only the way I played but the way I practiced. Um, I, I I was one of those people who lived by the adage that uh, you're going to play the way you practice. So I practiced really hard um, and. I took a lot of pride in getting my teammates to play their best. I don't pay a lot of attention to awards, but when the Denver Broncos started to hand out the most inspirational award on a yearly basis, and I would, I think for a number of years, I won it every year, uh, that would mean something to me because that was given by my teammates. You are a rare kind of linebacker because you were great in coverage, but you also were able to get after the passer too. Right, right. Um, I took took a lot of pride in, 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 you know, you start out at middle linebacker because I played middle in college and I started out inside for the Broncos. Um, I, I, I liked to think that I was good against the run I was, uh, even though I was undersized, uh, I could rush the passer. And, and I also, you know, with, uh, tell people I, I, I was running a 4 4 5, so uh, I was able to, to be pretty good in coverage as well. And, and so uh, that ability to stay on the field every down, which now, you know, it, it, it it, it doesn't happen as much in the league where you have a guy who stays linebackers who just stay on the field every down. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh, probably one of the best decisions that was ever made for me was made by Joe Collier, our great defensive coordinator. And Joe called me in after my first year, he had me playing middle linebacker. And then he called me in uh, just before the next season started, uh, my second year. And he goes, Tom, I, uh, I've been thinking about it. And at under 220 pounds, he goes, I just don't think that your body is going to stand up uh, to the punishment of playing in the interior linebacker slot. So I'm going to move you to the weak side. And I'm gonna move you to the open side of the offense where you can use your speed you can use your skills to rush the passer. You're going to be getting blocked by, uh, at times, running backs. He goes, we want to be able to take advantage of that. And, and what he didn't know at the time was I was just so happy because I was getting beat up so bad uh, on the inside, uh, on the interior. One of the guys who uh, was in the interior was a guy, Randy Gratishar. Yeah. What was it like playing alongside him? Uh, it was wonderful. It, it, Randy, Randy is as great a player as I've seen in the league. Uh, I don't say that lightly. Uh, anybody who looks at the stats uh, will understand that. I, I should probably say now, should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, outstanding leader. Uh, played his best ball in the clutch when, when you needed it. Uh, and, and, and lifted our game, li lifted all of us. You know, I, I, I actually played with a number of guys who uh, helped to change the game. It applies to more than Randy, but uh, Randy was our undisputed leader. I mean, you just talked about it a little bit there, but how good was that Orange Crush defense? It's pretty darn good, Phil. That, 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 that one had some skill to it. We, we, uh, we, we felt like we could not be beaten. I, I hesitate to use it because I don't, I don't want to, you know, puff my chest out for my team. But, but, but I will. There were moments when. We were not only the defense, we're, we were the offense as well. We, 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 we developed a skill of being able to get the ball, turn it over. Uh, and we would say, once we get the turnover, 
let's score. Let, 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 let's figure out ways. And, you know, people who saw us, saw us lateraling the ball to each other and, uh, you know, finding our way to the end zone. So it, it was a great unit. It, 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 I don't hesitate to say it at all. It, it was a marvelous, marvelous unit, as good as any defensive unit that's played. That Orange Crush team and going to the first Super Bowl in 1977 really mm -hmm. changed football here in Denver. They called it Bronco Mania. I mean, yes. what, what was the strangest thing you saw from some of the fans? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I don't know if it's strange. I, I I know I know that there was an electricity that was provided to us by our fans, much appreciated. Uh, but it did, that didn't start with us. I, I know that they gave it a name uh, while we were playing. Uh, but Phil, one of the one of the things that was was unique to Denver, because everybody says they have the best fans. You talk to any fan anywhere in this city, professional, uh, in, in this country, professional football fan, they'll say, we've got the best fans in the country. I had the best fans in the country. And the way I knew it was that when I arrived, I looked at the Bronco history. The Broncos had had 13 losing seasons in a row when I arrived. And we ran out for our first game, and that stadium was packed. And I believe it was Floyd Little who told me. He goes, it's like this all the time. And I, I, I couldn't understand why. I, I was like, why would, why would people come to the game when the team's not winning. And he goes, they love the Broncos, they love football, they show it to us all the time. We got some believers now. Do they believe now? Do they believe now? We believe that the fourth quarter is ours, and we, I think we had a little bit more than they had at the end of the game. Well, I wanted to ask you about one of your iconic games, uh, 1984, that snow game against the Packers on Monday Night Football. Just get your mind off the weather, get your mind on your business. Play ball. Ah! Uh, what do you remember about playing in that game? I remember a lot of snow. <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, although in Denver, uh, not cold, just snow. Uh, th that's a hard thing to explain to people who don't live in Denver. It, it, they talk about a dry heat. It, 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 kind of a dry cold as well. It, it can snow and not be, you know, this is a, so snowing, um, you know it's gonna be hard to move the football, but the first down uh, of the game, the Packers line up in a formation where I know they're coming my way. I, I know they're coming with a weak side flow run. And I just thought, hit it. Normal, normal, normal roof. Packers will start moving from right to left, from south to north. Packers handing the ball off for a loss, and it's picked up on the bounce on the fumble. It will be a touchdown for the Broncos on the first play. They fumble the first two plays of the game. We kick off to them again. They fumble again. This time the handoff is to Clark, and he drives to the right side across the 25, out near the 28, another fumble. This one's picked up on the far side and returned by Louis Wright. All of a sudden, it's 14 nothing, and I, I do remember one of them, Foley came over to him, and he goes, "That that's my first, you know, first touchdown. And he goes, and I'm, I'm like, so happy, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. That's my Way first to, touchdown. Way to pick it up. Way to pick it up. And then we battled the rest of the game with them trying to come back. Heavy Steeler double zone. Heavy rush. It was a very different kind of game where you score on the first two plays of the game and then you struggle the rest of the game to, to put another score, but understandable un under the conditions. But fun, a fun game. So many great memories there, uh, Tom. Uh, thank you so much for sharing them, and uh, it was great catching up with you. You're welcome, Phil.